Welcome to Forever in His Service Ministry. I'm Dawn Cheatham, and I'm excited to share with you about Proverbs 18. So get your Bibles and let's get started. Chapter 18, verse 1 says, A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment, or we could say sound wisdom. I love that but I want to share it with you in the Passion Translation. It reads, An unfriendly person isolates himself and seems to care only about his own issues, for his contempt of sound judgment makes him a recluse. An alternate translation of this verse in Hebrew or Aramaic could even say, An idle man meditates on his lusts and mocks wise instruction. Well, those are words that we should truly consider and live by. All of them, meaning this, the words, the scriptures, the verse that I just read, interpretation, all of them refer to someone who rejects sound wisdom. To receive this sound wisdom, you must be open and humble to receive it. Pride will reject it each and every time it is given. This pride and selfish mindset must go. We can choose to walk in humility with the Lord or in the sinfulness of our own will. Cutting ourselves away from others causes us to not only fall out of step with God, but we eventually fall out of step with everyone in our lives and will ultimately find ourselves all alone. This is the point of being at the end of yourself. And if that's where you must go to find God, then hurry up with your bad self and get there. <laughs> Amen? God is waiting for you with such love that you will wonder why you didn't leave that pride long ago. Let's move on to verse 4. It says, the words of a man's mouth are deep waters. The wellspring of wisdom is a flowing brook. Now, this reminds me of a passage in James chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. It refers to heavenly wisdom. Let me read that to you. It says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So, I ask the question today, are you a peacemaker or are you a troublemaker? Now, let's get serious. Think about that for a minute. If we were to continue reading chapter 4 in the book of James, which I encourage you to do so, we would see that the sin of pride promotes strife, or some would say trouble, and it follows you wherever you go. Perhaps you know someone that tends to be a troublemaker. I can tell you right now that the pride is the root. Pride is the root. So you have an effective way to intercede and pray for them, to pray for that person. Focus your prayer on the pride and address it at the root. Remove it in your prayers, with your prayers, and declare a humble heart to replace it. Amen? As we move on in the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, I want to look at verse 10. It says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. We could say secure or literally translated into set on high. Let me share. David recognized this as we see evidences in two passages. 2 Samuel 22 verses 1 through 4. So let's turn there. 
Now in verse one, David's just giving us the backdrop, but he, God has literally saved him from Saul, the hand of Saul. And he breaks out in, in, in worship to God. And in verse two, it says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, the God of my strength and whom I will trust, my shield and the horn or strength of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my savior, you save me from violence. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So I shall be saved from my enemies. The second scripture that we see this very similar passage in is Psalms 18 verses one through three. Let's read that together. It says in verse one, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust my shield and the horn again are my strength of my salvation and my stronghold. And I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be safe from my enemies. So the truth is the name of the Lord protects us not only by strength, but by height. So safety in this verse implies being lifted out of the situation, being lifted out of the enemy's hands. So visualize that with me just for a minute. You and I literally being lifted by the hand of God out of the enemy's grasp out of the enemy's plots and plans to deceive us and to trip us up. Wow, that gives me a really clear perspective of what God does for you and for me. The next verse that I want to go back to in, in Proverbs chapter 18 is verse 16. Let me read that to you. It says, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. I love that passage. I love that passage. It can be interpreted several different ways. The first is best understood as if you are bringing a gift to someone that you want to receive favor from. The Passion Translation states it the best, and I wanna read that to you. It says, would you like to meet a very important person? Take a generous gift. It will do wonders to gain entrance into his presence. Now, this was very customary in the day of David and Solomon. If you wanted to visit the king, bring a gift to honor them. It's not a bribe, but a talent or asset that opens the way, the door to meet the individual. The second way to interpret this verse is that all the giftings that God placed within each of us has a purpose and a place to be used. This means that you and I don't have to stress and worry or try to knock down doors and push our way into areas we may not be called to be in. There are several places in the Bible that talks about these spiritual giftings. One place is in Romans chapter 12, three through eight, and I encourage you to read that. This reference is serving God with your giftings and helps you identify what those giftings are. A second passage that I encourage you to read is in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It talks about the diversity in gifts that you and I may receive. And most specifically, Paul states in the very first verse of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that he doesn't want us to be ignorant in regards to the giftings or to our specific assignments, if you will. You see, the Corinthians misunderstood the manner in which the Holy Spirit was working through individuals. And sometimes that's misunderstood today. And they abuse the use of spiritual gifts, apparently regarding them as the end in themselves, 
You see, we must also recognize that they are not the end. We don't seek the gift. We seek the giver of the gift. You see, Paul tells us in his words that these gifts are critical for the health and well-being of the church. If we continue reading on verses 4 through 11, Paul tells us very clearly that these gifts are as he, the Father, wills, and I believe God has a place and a gift for each of us to thrive, not just survive. Gifts are all for his glory. Amen? Go back with me to Proverbs chapter 18. We're going to look at verses 22. It reads, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Now, if we go back to Genesis 2.18, the Lord said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. And a few verses over, we actually see how God made Eve, if we were to turn there and read. With the rib of Adam, as well as his reaction to God's creation as of a wife. Adam had truly found favor with the Lord God. The Passion Translation reads this particular verse this way. When a man finds a wife, he has found a treasure, for she is the gift of God to bring him joy and pleasure. This sounds similar. However, it adds two more sentences to the verse. This next sentence is the one excuse me, is not found in the Hebrew text, but it is found both in the Aramaic and the Septuagint. Let me read that to you. It says, but the one who divorces a good woman loses what is good from his house. And the last sentence of this verse in the Passion Translation says that it is only found in the Septuagint, but it is also worth sharing. And it states, to choose an adulteress is both stupid and ungodly. Now, I believe that there's some today that maybe might find themselves in a sticky situation in their marriage. If so, humble yourself, repent, change your ways, and ask forgiveness. Do what needs to be done. Bring restoration to your marriage. It can be done. With God, all things are possible. Amen? Now, let's look at the last verse, 24. A man who has friends must himself be friendly, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Now, this is the last verse that I have today, but there is a friend. The Hebrew word used for sticks closer can also be translated to join together, to cleave, to pursue, or to overtake. John 15 verses 14 and 15 tells us that Jesus calls us his friend. Do you call him your friend? The first part of this verse is very clear. We must be a friend first. If he isn't your friend, I encourage you to ask him to be that for you today. As we close in prayer, then I would encourage you to nurture that relationship or that friendship on a daily basis by pray, praying with him and reading his word. So pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you are a strong tower that we can run into. Father, I lift up each viewer today, and if any found themselves in compromising situations, that they would humble themselves, repent, and walk in forgiveness, righteous before you. Jesus, I thank you that you call me friend, and I decree today that you will be my closest friend, that I will nurture and guard our relationship. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining me today. I look forward to sharing Proverbs 19 with you next time. Be blessed.